the OGs in China <laughs> with Bitcoin, right? Are Justin Sun, CZ, but he CZ's always been moving around. Yeah. And then uh what's his name? Jihan Wu. Who yeah. Oh shit, I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, Jihan Wu. Oh, yeah. That's a Jihan dope ass name. He, he's he's quiet as hell right now, but he's actually his company uh, that he's the CEO of is called Matrix Port, which mm. um, I think it's it's not like a Masari, it's not like a crypto quant, it's like data slash like narrative mm. uh, fundamental info a little bit something like that. But it's um, he tries to put out a few ideas of what he thinks should be happening in the market through there. But he's like because you know China banned Bitcoin in the middle of the last bull run and all the miners and the exchanges were chased out for the most part. You know, he uh, he got real quiet after that. But yeah, I think he was what just to let I guess the audience know who might not be big. Who the hell is this? Like basically, he ran uh, probably the biggest uh, what do you call it pool for Bitcoin miners as as like a single entity or person with Ant Farm. And so he at one point in 2017, I mean, he was the most likely, most likely the most influential person in all of crypto with Bitcoin specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Cause easy at that point was, you know, he just started so, Binance was up and coming. Yeah. Like he, like he didn't like Binance didn't really even get really semi powerful until the very fourth quarter of 2017. And it was really uh, where Binance got very big was basically in, in the first half, the first six months of 2018 with all the, mm -hmm. um, it was one of the first ones to really, uh, I think what really took Binance to the next level was like, there were some of the first ones to really promote and um, put on stable coins on their exchange. And right so, so yeah, usd tether yeah yeah exactly and well that and then you know uh tether back in the day just to kind of give context to the conversation we'll be having for china stuff like uh back in the day there was this one city i don't remember the name of it but it was like on the uh, border of russia and china and it's like it's out in the middle of nowhere kind of thing but right. the only thing that they had a claim to fame was was like this nice shopping mall that um was literally i think there's like a shopping it's like they have one that's literally just in russia and then one that's just in china oh, and okay. essentially what people were doing was going and meeting up face to face there peer to peer when they cross border and doing peer to peer usdt transactions it was like <laughs> i forget the stat but it was like millions of dollars of usdt actually transacted peer to peer uh across the border there because that was the only way for a lot of people to to get funnel money out of the country um you know with crypto and so uh that was interesting but then also like tron itself like they've had a lot of fake transactions over time but the the real ones in terms of usdt are legit because um the more china yeah exactly the more china kind of keeps things quiet right the more people have to use usdt to kind of get around stuff and so um i would say like the number one use case for tron is just cheap transactions on usdt for chinese money you know right so um, it's, it's powerful because that's a lot of money they got over there. <laughs> a lot now. Now some people think that like when like when there's tether like the big meme was like tether te like and this is why like there never was there was semi serious attacks on this but like so big all right so the big the big the real big uh, thing that the people that Bitcoiners why they don't like US tether so, I mean, USDT too much versus USDC is really based off of they think they're printing they're printing money out of thin air. Mm -hmm. And, but they were mostly buying Ethereum and Bitcoin with that money. So a lot of Bitcoiners are like, hey, well, hey, they're pumping my coin. I don't care. But at the same time, too, with like they're controlling all, they're buying all the Bitcoin. And so like people didn't really like, they didn't know really know which way to how to feel about it because it was like, well, hey, well, bro, hey they another billion homies. This is good. And so like, yeah. And, and okay. So let, let's go back on it a little bit. Like who's connected to who, right? So who, who was doing this? If you kind of think about it, there's a couple public faces being Samson Mao and Adam back mainly, but you have Bitfinex, right? Which is its own exchange makes yeah. tether all that. They have collateral, whatever that means, right? They've said it means real estate. They said it means crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum specifically, yada, yada, yada. But they're smart because they understand crypto and it's four year cycles. They're like, well, if on the lows, we print as much money as possible and buy more Bitcoin, Ethereum, hold up the price, then they're always going to have more money because it's, you know, doing right. always going to do better than the dollar overall. So it's just timing the market. Now 
the people who are behind it, right? Samson Mao is the main face with Bitfinex yeah. out there talking about Tether and connecting like El Salvador um, to a lot of that stuff. But uh, Adam Back, right? He also, you know, talks a lot with Samson Mao. They're kind of like a little tag team there for some things, but he's the CEO of Blockstream. He doesn't technically have anything to do with Tether, but my sister, and you know, he's allegedly potentially uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. So my understanding is, you know, they're the group and then Max Kaiser's in on there as a cheerleader for them to get into new countries. So my guess is they're kind of like a, a, a trio of people who have some connection to Tether and, and Bitfinex enough to know what's going on and kind of give whispers out there in the industry potentially. So, you know, interesting to kind of watch, you know, how the West and East kind of combine uh, there. That's kind of always how it's been in crypto because it's been a very international market from yeah. Uh, once it got about almost the beginning, almost the beginning, yeah, because it sort of started U.S. wise, and then it completely went to, to Japan, pretty much, right, with Mount Gox, and then from there it kind of basically stayed in the East the entire time up until like I think me and you were some of the first people really reporting on the, like this is a very U.S. led cycle. Our guys know about this in the crypto mindset right. course. We this has been a huge thing that we've been harping on since like the mega course where like we did a we fused two courses together at the bottom of the market. Uh, we had, you know, congratulations to everyone who was there. You made a lot of money. <laughs> You're going to make more money. You know, we're going to make a lot more money. 